telling this story about GameStop and the stock market. The GameStop stock exploded. The struggling video game retailer somehow becoming one of the hottest stocks on the market. How did this happen? Amateur investors have been leading a wild ride on Wall Street. In an epic David versus Goliath showdown. It's not just a story about a stock. It's a story about society, about where we are now. Suddenly it became a very real, oh my God, we're doing this. And it was fast. GameStop has now doubled. Moving billions of dollars. Then yeah, 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 they get stuck. Let me know, game stuff. Sort of shock and awe was probably the first reaction. When Elon Musk tweets, the world listens. This is just the world's biggest casino. Hedge fund titans have lost an estimated five billion dollars. There's very little the rich can do to stop us from eating them. The system was being gamed. There's no doubt about that. We have never seen individual investors come together like that for a movement like this. People who started all this knew what they were doing. There's clearly a financial revolution happening right now. It was about taking money from rich, fat, stupid hedge funds. <laughs> Frozen trading completely. The system seems rigged. This is this is kind of shocking. People are mad. People are angry. They should be. Some people do think you should go to jail. There's no evidence for it, and I think it was completely wrong. What exactly is going on? One of the reasons why I was immediately attracted to this story is that I saw the human nature side of it. Each one of those clicks along the way, someone made or lost money. And there are people who made a life's fortune and there are people who lost a life's fortune because of this story. I didn't even know new stocks and like, oh, I'm buying like GameStop. A 10 year old San Antonio boy is getting national attention after cashing in on the GameStop stock craze. <laughs> In 2019, I was trying to figure out what kind of gift I could get this kid for Kwanzaa. We had been in and out of GameStop. He was, oh, I want this, I want that. I was like, Okay, kid, <laughs> slow it down. That's what made me think, oh, I need to start teaching this kid about money. I understood that's the company that he loves, so that's why I bought the stock. When she explained to me that I own at least the itsy bitsy part of the company, she was like, and I was like, wow, cool. <laughs> it is interesting to watch stocks grow and watch them fall. It's like a game. Yes. Because you never know if you can lose a ton of money. No, no, no. Or if you can make a big jump like how I did. In these moments of hysteria and mania, I think one of the most important questions is not how do people feel, but how did we get here? Video games are the latest craze to sweep the country and most of the world, too. Millions of people are addicted to hours of gazing at electronic images on game screens and arcades. Nintendo video games. It may be the most addictive toy in history, and it's definitely the hottest thing this Christmas. During its heyday, GameStop was this place where if you wanted the newest, greatest, latest thing, that's where you went. They actually used to buy games for my kids in GameStop. I might have even bought a few computer games for myself, but uh, being a bit of a nerd like that, I love playing video games, so that was like the joint to go get the, like, Mike Tyson's punch out or something. This is just a huge part of my childhood. It's an all cool kid. Come get my games, you know, the latest, whatever's hot out. But yeah, it, 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 I probably haven't been in GameStop in, in the better part of 20 years. GameStop, the biggest video game retailer in the world, announced today that it will close up to 200 stores by the end of the year. GameStop was a business that wasn't doing very well. In the last decade, its revenues have essentially been cut in half. It's gone from making money to losing money. GameStop is, for the most part, you, you look at, in my mind, like an antiquated company, right? Because, you know, they used to sell the physical video games, which now everything's online, you can share, buy. I would describe GameStop as a company in search for meaning. For raison d'etre, if we want to go back to French. Over the past five years, GameStop stock had gone roughly from 40 or $50 down to $5. 
So, in 2014, this hedge fund named Melvin Capital started to short the stock. Short selling means that you're betting against companies. Think about it like this. Let's say you like a stock. Well, you buy it and you hope it goes up. If you hate a stock, you can sell it and hope it goes down. Now, people might say, wait a second. I don't own that stock. How do I sell it? Well, you can borrow. It's complicated. So we have 10-year-old Jaden to explain. Shorting stock? I'll break it down. Can you see my feet? Let's say I borrow an Xbox from my friend Nate. Then I go and sell the Xbox for 500 bucks. When the price drops, I buy the Xbox back for $250. I give Nate back his Xbox and pocket the difference. I just made $250, and that's exactly what the hedge funds were hoping would happen with GameStop. When did you first hear about GameStop? Um, I had heard about it because Michael Burry, another character in Big Short, had said he was buying stock a while back. I'm Danny Moses. I'm Danny Moses. Yes, I was in several scenes in the Big Short. I was the optimist in the, the bunch. optimist of the bunch. And a hell of a trader. Which is the only reason they put up with this bullshit optimism. Back then, there were hedge funds betting that the housing market would collapse. This time around, a new set of hedge funds was betting that GameStop would crash. I would recommend that every person that's bullish on a stock go find a short seller and look at their thesis. And by the, if they think their thesis is wrong, buy more. I've long joked that, that short sellers are the real-time financial detectives. You know, short selling can can provide benefits in terms of, like, allowing people to hedge risk. It, it uh, creates another point of view on the price. It can uncover frauds. Everybody remembers the Winklevoss twins from the social network. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I'm Kevin Winklevoss, and this is my brother. Hi. They were early investors in Bitcoin, always looking for what's next, and that's why they're intrigued by the GameStop saga. This is a catalyst for people recognizing um, the benefits of an alternative system. GameStop became the most shorted stock, meaning there were far more shares shorted than there actually existed, because some hedge funds correctly perceived that the company was withering away. But what they didn't perceive was that at a certain point, Bulls make money, bears make money, but pigs get slaughtered. And they were pigs. And so the GameStop saga was set in motion. And it was exacerbated by the pandemic, the boredom and the restlessness. People who are used to having lives suddenly don't. A stock like GameStop suddenly becomes 90% of your life because you're not going out to dinner with friends. A lot of cases, some people got stimulus checks where they didn't need it for immediate bills, and they were able to invest it in the market. One, two, three! <laughs> you happy, little girl? At the beginning of the pandemic, me and my wife were scared. She had just found out she was pregnant. Life is so stressful and so unknown. We don't know how we're gonna pay for diapers. We don't know how much time my wife's gonna take off for maternity leave. We don't know how much time I can take off of work. No, oh, she was hungry. I would have been hungry. It was summer of 2020. The stimulus check had just hit my account. We got $2,400 for me and my wife and I wanted to make this money stretch for us. There you go, good job. You wanna play a tune for daddy? I wasn't too knowledgeable about all the ways that I could trade stocks. I just started doing research on all fronts of the internet. I was checking out a few people I follow on Twitter. I was checking out finance blogs and they were all mentioning GameStop. You wanna come and look at daddy's stocks? At the beginning of January, I bought 100 shares of GameStop for $35 a share. There was something amazing that happened with the pandemic. While a lot of the big hedge funds, rich people, ran away, the little guy, the people who, frankly, just discovered stocks, used the opportunity to buy. And that was a revolution. The best bets, right? Oh, you get that dumb. You get that dumb. You get that dumb. See, we're 
I wanted to stay anonymous because I am anonymous. We're all anonymous. We're just a bunch of anonymous people on the internet. For me, this kind of all started when the pandemic started in March. Work shut down, and I all of a sudden have a lot of free time on my hands and nothing to do. I've been investing for about six years. I just had two or three stocks that I bought six years ago, and over time they grew. So I actually sold some of the stock that I had, and now I had some money to invest. I spent my whole day watching the market and researching the market. And I would see companies that right at the open of pre-market, they're up 100%. And I would think to myself, man, too bad I missed the boat on that one. I can become a millionaire in 30 years. I don't wanna wait that long. I'm a big millionaire now. So bad. At that point, I was looking for some advice. So it was about that time that I discovered Wall Street Bets. There's one subreddit in particular called Wall Street Bets, and that's where a lot of these retail traders, the quote unquote amateur investors, are gathering to discuss their stock purchase. A community on Reddit called Wall Street Bets, readers who spend 24 seven talking about stocks. You know, one of the ways we look at Reddit is that we're fulfilling the promise of the internet. We're bringing people together around the world to connect, to share their thoughts, and to discuss anything and everything. People that were spending time at home and less time commuting and less time at work and doing things had time to go on to chat rooms and go on to boards and read about companies and learn about companies. It became a phenomenon. Sports are gone, so I've moved totally. to day trading. Sports and sports gambling is a big focus of our company. That was put on hold because of the pandemic. So what else can you gamble on? Well, there's this stock market thing sitting here. I have margin, I have this, I don't know what any of it means. Wall Street bets had existed for a long time when the pandemic hit. It just went nuts. Six figure days only, six figure days only. So a lot of new members into Wall Street bets but really changed the shape of that community quickly. If you have an idea for a crazy trade, Wall Street bets is definitely the place to post it. They have a culture, they have rules, it can be crass, it's funny. They add lingo to the moon, which is like riding a rocket ship of a stock. Paper hands, people who get out of their positions too early because they're scared. Diamond hands for people willing to buy and hold. And a lot of people turned out to be very good at researching stocks and buying them. There are a lot of smart people out there posting really interesting things based on documents doing fundamental work. Now that's about one or two percent. The 98 percent is, you know, to the moon with lots of emojis. It's not for everybody, but being not for everybody is what makes a community a community. I don't think you can have a community unless there's a clear boundary between outsiders and insiders. Everybody was so dialed in. We can come to a common place read it and you know we can share our thoughts all i did was read wall street bets at 3 55 a.m five minutes before the pre-market opened there will be some memes there will be some losses or gains and we'll see what everybody's saying what we think is going to happen today i saw some of the smartest analysis i've ever seen in my life and i was hooked I saw people turning $3,000 into $100,000 a week. I saw a guy turn $30,000 into one and a half million in about seven months. I wanted to be one of those guys. Then I stumbled upon the Reddit handle, Deep Fucking Value. He also goes by the YouTube account, Roaring Kitty, and he is our hero, Keith Gill. Cheers, everybody! <laughs> So Roaring Kitty, he's a personality on Wall Street Bets. Look at this, she's 60%. Makes little tutorials and videos and talks about what he likes in the stock market. And so when I see the market caps at 260, I think, all right, here's the first margin of safety that sticks up. Keith Gill is a very, very smart man. Don't be the tendies, let's go! He spotted.
wanted something before anyone. He kills a huge winner. I mean, he figured something out, had a vision about what could happen. He is the hero in the story. Bad ass mother. As a broadmaster, I work on television, series, films, live action entertainment, cooking shows, reality shows. And the nature of what I do is anything and everything within the environment that a human being or an animal is interacting with or dealing with or picks up is what I do. This is my hobby. I am a taxidermist. I do a lot of skeletal articulation and preservation of bones. This is a bobcat. Coyote, muskrats. This is actually a Florence nest from Nebraska. So yeah, we're weird people. Are you trying to take your squirrel? No, he comes every day. Hey, no. My grandmother, she's my best friend and my mentor and my hero, and she's kind of just the most amazing person ever. She always wanted us to be adults. We were not raised in an environment of you're a child, so you should know childish things. We were expected to read the newspaper. She was very heavily involved in day trading in the stock market. She ran major analytical sheets, I mean, long numbers. And I was always curious, and because I was curious, she would always pull us over and make us learn. She explained to us that the stock market was sort of a rich person's game. But if you if you learn about it, it's not the hardest thing. And you can make money and never have to rely on the government or assistance or, or a man. If you buy, you have to be ready and willing to spend some time. I got into Wall Street Bets on Reddit 15 months ago. I was actually playing World of Warcraft with a guy and he goes, oh, dude, you've got to check out Wall Street Bets. These guys are insane. And holy hell, it was just chaos. <laughs> if it was a room, it would be an OTB in Ontario, California. It would be smoky and a bunch of people yelling at each other. It's a boys club in there. They are, uh, they are a lot of very high octane guys drinking a lot of energy drinks and yelling at pretty much the world. And at the time, we had been trying to find an app that would be easier for my grandmother to play in the stock market. My G's position here right now. And Robinhood seemed to be the easiest plug and play system. Don't think you're an investor. You don't need to become an investor. You were born one. Robinhood. We're proud of the fact that we've enabled so many younger investors and first-time investors to have access to the markets. Robinhood came out of the gate with this very appealing messaging, saying, we want to democratize trading. And right there, they're saying, everyone is welcome. It's been difficult to get people in the stock market because it's cumbersome, the rules are are hard, and there's really been no app that just makes it so it's so easy. You ever think about trading stocks? There's always been a cost usually up to 10 bucks for every single trade until now. You just sign up. And once you sign up, you can do pretty much anything you want with it for free. Robin, 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 Robin Hood. Hood. It's free. So the whole premise of it is that you can do as well as the big guys can. They don't have any advantages over you. That's been clever, if perhaps wrong and dangerous, but definitely clever. I kind of became obsessed with it and started plugging more money because it's $10 and it's $20. You trade a stock, confetti falls from the sky. So it feels, in many ways, more like you're playing a video game than that you're investing. This is just the world's biggest casino, and the people in the suits will want to tell you that only they can play this game, and you have to be a certain type of intelligence, and this and that. I don't believe that. I, I, I truly don't believe it. I've been doing it now for a year, and I think it, it you know, everyone can trade. You can play in fractions of stocks that you cannot do on the larger houses. It makes it very easy for you to put in $200 a month without thinking that you're putting in $200 a month. What matters, though, is that Robinhood's zero commission model has finally caught the fancy of a whole new generation of investors. The number one free app in Apple's App Store, Robinhood posting its highest daily average users ever last week. Robinhood has created an entire market of people that can really move stocks. That was truly underappreciated by professional money managers and how powerful the retail movement has become. You have Wall Street bets where people are talking about stocks they want to own or sell all day long, and then Robinhood is the mechanism that lets them do it.
we could do exactly what the hedge funders have been doing forever. Because we are a hedge fund. When you really think about it, if everyone's got a dollar and there are six million of us in here, we have six million dollars. What do we want to put six million dollars to? Boom. Yeah, we're good to go. All right, we're going to play Call of Duty, Marley. Oh, and, or do you want to play Tony Hawk? All right, we can play together. Yeah, we'll play Tony Hawk together. All right, who are you going to be? Press X, press X, and press triangle. All right, there you are. Okay, come to me, come to me. Okay. GameStop has been special to me. Oh, I got hit. As a kid, for your birthday, you generally get a GameStop gift card. Ooh. Ooh, I just got a combo one. The joy and the passion of walking into a GameStop and, you know, looking at everything you can get and just the imagination runs wild. And as I've gotten older, I've continued to be a gamer. I've continued to play games. I've continued to purchase from GameStop. I got these Go, let's go get them. I've dabbled around with trading here or there. Obviously, I've followed GameStop stock. So I thought, what's going on behind the scenes? There was a ton of large hedge funds who had shorted the stock. I firmly believe in, in GameStop. I think they have the opportunity to transition to you know this new digital world. These hedge funds were betting against it. I never want to see anybody lose a lot of money. Do I want to see the average Joe make some money? Absolutely do I want to do that. GameStop is by far the most heavily shorted company in the market, with short interest of around 100% of the float. 100%? Can you believe that shit? About six months ago, GameStop was really beaten down. Its shares were trading around $4. Keith Gill looked at GameStop and thought, Maybe there is some value here. But investors also need to consider whether GameStop can opportunistically leverage the console. I believe that people who are betting on the company's failure are missing factors that I see. That all that may be needed to revalue its stock is a shift in sentiment. A lot of people make fun of him. Dude, like, what's your obsession with this company GameStop? Get over it. But based on prevailing sentiment, the market, and popular culture, many think it's a foolish investment. But everyone's wrong. It's like the big short again. Or more like the big short squeeze this time, right? Hold up. Short squeeze? I'll explain. Remember my friend's Xbox we talked about earlier? They need the back, but now I can't find a cheap one anywhere. The price is going up and up and up. The only one I can find is going to cost me $1,000, so I've just lost $500. You get something called a short squeeze where a stock can go up big when the short seller can't find the stock that they sold. Those folks have to buy more stock to cover the stock that they borrowed. Enough people get on board, it can squeeze and go up. And that's when you can get uh, panic moves on the upside. And suddenly, huge numbers of buyers come in and they take it up and you are squeezed because you can't find the stock that you need. And the next thing you know, you can be wiped out. Epic. The people who started all this knew what they were doing to be in a position where you understand the number of short sellers and to be able to convey that to other small investors so that they understand it, it really was a fundamentally driven pursuit. An upper move could be explosive, maybe. Lauren Kitty, he represents the opportunity. The little guy that had the information that was able to figure it out, this might be a great way to supplement my income and support a company that I believe in and that I love. You can't do it by yourself so once the movement gets going and once it's a huge ball rolling downhill it really goes i wanted to buy as many shares as possible because i really believed in this thing so i threw the dice and let it roll with el duino the right for decided we were going to rush into gamestop uh, i jumped in we had briefings about it there are headline briefings every day what we're investing in we have a group of retail investors who have a belief about a company that maybe isn't reflected in the market. Are there any articles out about it yet? There'll be, there will be some. 
This is not a regular short squeeze. We have a ton of enthusiastic young buyers in this market who are plain, open, plotting to blow up the shorts. The people who like GameStop love GameStop, and gamers are serious people. You don't want to mess with gamers. I've sold stock short before. I know that there's a risk that someone can come in and, and create a short squeeze. That's always part of the risk analysis. So True Hedge knew that. They just didn't know it could be anything like this. They certainly did not anticipate the, the retail investor just crushing that. weekend when GameStop started to rise and was rising pretty quickly, in that moment, it felt bigger than itself. It felt like something was about to blow up. Suddenly, every single question that's coming to me, what's going on in GameStop? Let's get to GameStop. GameStop. This GameStop is really something we must talk about. And I was watching GameStop going up and I said, wow, I mean, maybe they've got a plan. These mostly young traders are buying the stock in droves. It is making the market crazy. Sort of shock and awe was probably the first reaction. It started to feel to me like it wasn't just a market story, but an everybody story. It was like little old ladies of grocery store. It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't just, the entire world was talking about. The speed at which this thing is growing is what's making it really hard to keep up with. Suddenly, they see their stock soaring. Shares were up 134%. This was a company that was worth a couple hundred million dollars. And suddenly we're talking about a company almost overnight that's worth billions of dollars. Nothing changed fundamentally at the company, but suddenly the stock price is up exponentially. GameStop seemed more like the games have just started. GameStop more than doubling yet again yesterday. It was sort of this realization that the individual investor, the dawn of that investor is here. And historically, they've really been sort of second class citizens. We're on the Reddit page, so I've got my phone on Robinhood. I have my laptop up. Suddenly it became a very real thing of, oh my God, we're doing this. And it was fast. My phone was going off because I have it on my Yahoo watch list. I told Jane, I was like, you have to look at this. like. This doesn't happen very often. There was just no way it climbed that high. All of a sudden, I'm seeing my portfolio reach almost $50,000. It was exciting and fun to be part of a community. You know, at one point, I know my $4,500 was worth like $80,000. It was that day a roller coaster. Was, I felt like emotionally exhausted at the end of each day, just watching the stock like go up higher and higher. They're together in the belief that they found something special and they're gonna, everyone's gonna make money. The driver of the stock is Wall Street Bets, and, and that's an amalgam. And these are united people who are, to me, every bit uh, as legit as those who work on Wall Street. They should have every right to be able to do what Wall Street does, and I think a lot of people feel they don't. The video game retailer has soared about 800% in the last week. From reading Reddit tonight, it is clear many of the users feel this is the average small-time investor versus the big Wall Street banks. There are a lot of millennial investors, and the millennial investor is one that is investing not based purely on economics. Investors coming to the table to make change in policy or in their reality. That is what is the big story here. It became a little bit of a class war between institutional investors, the haves, and the retail investors, you know, the have-nots in this case. The rich, fat hedge funds have had their way, and now it's time to destroy them. These people uniquely don't care about anybody who wears a suit. Okay, you see this? This means I'm horrible. It's about rage against the machine. It's about a world in which you've seen an increasing divide between haves and have-nots. I just love the stick-it-to-the-manness. Part of it. Me yesterday, this GameStop is crazy. Today, do not sell your stocks, my brothers. This is what the enemy wants. This is not going to end well when it ends. And the bigger question is, when does it end? I did have conversations about hedge fund managers. You know, what the heck is going on here? Starts crossing the headlines. GameStop investors make billions and this at the expense of short sellers.
people who are betting against GameStop can be ruined and destroyed and broken if we all come in and buy at once. The people who had sold it short were forced to cover. Cover means close your trade out. And they were obliterated. Hedge fund titans have lost an estimated $5 billion. Rumors that a major $13 billion hedge fund, Melvin Capital, was going to go out of business? Melvin Capital on January 25th gets an emergency infusion of capital from Citadel and Point72. $2.75 billion because they are losing so much money on their short. Citadel, the hedge fund, then extended a huge loan to Melvin Capital so that it didn't go out of business. They played a better hand of poker than the, the hedge fund, the financial wizards, who are supposed to win at that game. When the stock was going up, I'm like, okay, it's just being game. And this could go to infinity, and it has nothing to do with fundamentals. Some people are getting super rich, and guess what? Some of these hedge funds may go out of business and lose billions, but I didn't feel bad for them at all. The rocket ship had taken off. Everybody was getting on board. And I was just, whoa, this is for real, people. This is for real. That's when they started using terms like Red Rebellion and David and Goliath. Those guys are terrible. And it's not fair what they do. And all of a sudden, they're trying to tell us that it's not fair what we're doing? I believe in this company. I'm not selling it. Like, this is going to keep going up. This is a story that captures the zeitgeist across the board. It's on Jimmy Kimmel. It's on SNL. Everybody is talking suddenly about GameStop. Now, Mario, can you please explain this uh, GameStop, Reddit, stock market? The new majority shareholder of GameStop, Derek Bowler. The GameStop story is one of the few stories I can think of that so completely encompasses every part of social media, from Reddit to Twitter to YouTube. Hedge funds are Lex Luthor. Like, they are literally the perfect villain. My 11 and 14 year old son and daughter, they came to me because they were seeing um, videos about it on TikTok. Every place you can think of, GameStop was there. I go to my dentist, and he's in the middle of cleaning my teeth, and he's asking me if I think he should buy GameStop. I mean, this is hysteria. This is crazy. Now, would you say the stock market still works? Uh, first of all, it's uh, pronounced the stock market. Tesla's Elon Musk. A tweet by Elon Musk. Elon Musk put out a simple tweet. The tweet was liked over 251,000 times and got more than 38,000 retweets. When Elon Musk tweets, the world listens. What in the butterball biscuits is going on here? Elon Musk tweeted GameStop. Game over. GameStop to the moon. Elon Musk shows up. It's too irresistible. He has to join the conversation. How could he not? Get involved. I mean, it's the kind of thing he loves. What he says, people take to heart. The power this man holds from this one tweet is insane. Elon Musk added fuel to the fire, throwing gasoline on a fire that was already raging. If you're missing that there's a movement happening here, you're like missing it. Either I'm going to the moon, or I'm going to hell in a bucket, baby! Go! thing is going up in flames and the flames are getting bigger and it's a giant party and why not make it an explosion gamestop hit a peak market value of 24 billion dollars post that elon musk tweet i don't know if there's ever been a stock in history that has risen that far that fast We knew that we had to make a quick decision. That's when I had to have a, a, a sit down with my wife and talk to her about possibly selling some of the stock. As the GameStop situation evolved and the price became higher and higher, the situation becomes more and more risky. Of course, some people decided to stay in, you know, for a financial opportunity or because of the cause, and other people decided to 
to get out. At 350, this is ridiculous. People have to sell some of it. And I was mistakenly thought it was about buying something at 10 and selling it at 350. How naive I was. This is one of the few opportunities that we've been able to absolutely screw over Wall Street. I'm willing to lose every penny because it's not about the money. It's about sending a message. I was holding. I was going to hold because I like the stock, because I don't pay for it at Wall Street bets. I was confident the stock was going to go to the thousands. So obviously, like, if, I, if I'm confident the stock's going to the thousands, why sell it at 500? I was in the middle of a purchase, and suddenly my app goes gray. And when that happens, it generally means that the market has gone down, or I've lost connection, or something has been pulled from the market. Something has been stopped. I opened up the app. I saw that you could no longer press the buy button in Robinhood. And I said, holy shit. This morning, something huge happened. The popular Robinhood service blocked users from buying stocks like GameStop that were seeing volatile movement. On the morning of January 28th, I'm getting all of these tweets and messages about people not being able to use the Robinhood app to buy GameStop. And of course, the members of Wall Street Bets and I think around the country said, you know, what's going on? Everyone's getting the same errors and suddenly we all realize they've shut us down. They say, we're restricting trading of 13 stocks including GameStop. A broker calling themselves Robinhood, let's think about the irony of that, tells their users, we're not gonna allow you to buy and only sell. That's crazy. I'm like, wow, Wall Street is really not gonna let the little guy win here. You know, when the music stops, you're not gonna have a chair. It is wild. This story has really taken on a life of its own. Nobody understands why this thing that they could do yesterday is not possible on the app today. What we saw on Wall Street Bets, and I think very quickly around the country, was anger and confusion. Many calling foul, but the decision sparked outrage among Robinhood customers. It's people's hard-earned money that they put into this. Wall Street is changing the rules. It's a shame because there were people who probably wanted to take action but couldn't. So people are up in arms about this, and that's when the conspiracy theories start to fly on social media. Not like you and me who have to take a loss when a trade doesn't go our way. These billionaires call them Robin Hood to restrict trading on these stocks. It's disgusting, even by Wall Street standards. Robin Hood has just shown themselves to be a piece of shit company and a shell for the rich, so this is why you need to boycott them now. So it's an issue, it's a problem, and, and people are mad, people are angry, and they should be, you know, because this is, this is the app that claims this is about, you know, free trade, and, and they, they took that power away from people. And I ended up smashing my phone pretty, uh, pretty badly. That created more losses than anything because you immediately ended the demand for the stock. Rather than having natural buyers who wanted to continue to participate, they couldn't. GameStop tanked 44%. Even though most brokerages restricted trading of GameStop that day, Robinhood becomes the poster child for the rage because it's the company that promised to democratize trading. We had Vlad on the call somewhere around 6.37. I don't know exactly what time he joined. Um, we made the decision to start to restrict securities around 7.15 in the morning. The system was being gamed. If the hedge funds and the people shorting and the billionaires were making billions, Nobody presses pause. But this time, it was the little guy, the individuals, were making a ton, and suddenly the pause button was pressed, which I never remember having. I didn't even know you could do it. So I think that was the outrage. It's like the first time the little guy's kicking the big guy's tail, and all of a sudden, we just stopped the game and changed the rules, really. And I guess you can, but nobody knew that. We were aware that our customers would be unhappy, and obviously, it wasn't a decision that we took lightly. It was something that we had to do, and we did it for one day. Customers have been showing up right here at Robinhood's headquarters, venting frustration that they can't get in touch with anybody about some of their account issues. Someone allegedly threw dog feces at the front door. We know Robinhood had stopped it. We don't know why they did. Robinhood CEO Vlad Tenev writing that the moves to limit trading of specific stocks was not because we wanted to stop people from buying these or any stocks, but because of an increase on mandatory collateral on the service. Robinhood stops the game because they have a collateral request. Three billion dollars in collateral overnight. Suddenly, all of this trading that's been going on on their platform, it poses too much risk to 
their business and to the clearinghouse's business. The clearinghouse is just a bank who is sitting in the middle of the transaction and requiring both sides to put up money to cover what they put forward. All the clearinghouse was doing was knocking on their door saying, fellas, are you sure you got enough money in, in the house here to cover what you're doing? And they said, no, we can't. We've got to go get some more money. Frankly, as you know, a lot of angry customers out there and a lot of questions about what took place and the decisions that you made, whether you're trying to protect them from themselves. Explain what happened today. We absolutely did not do this at the direction of any market maker or hedge fund uh, or anyone we rallied to or other market participants. Uh, the reason we did it was because uh, Robinhood is a brokerage firm. Uh, we have lots of financial requirements, including SEC net capital requirements and clearinghouse deposits. So that's money that we have to deposit at various clearinghouses. There are some really legitimate questions that need to be asked here. Landmark hearing on Capitol Hill as the main players in the Reddit revolution face lawmakers. We're talking about market structure here. Uh, we're talking about issues of fairness in the market. We're not going to get to some of the fundamental questions here about whether investor welfare is safe. This hearing is entitled Game Stopped. Who wins and loses when short sellers, social media, and retail investors collide. It's alarming how little we know about the inner workings of the market. And I am thankful that this committee is examining what happened. I also want to say that I support retail investors' right to invest in what they want, when they want. Mr. Tenev. Mr. Tenev. Mr. Tenev. My question to you is, isn't it possible that the issue is the fact that you simply didn't manage your own book or failed to appropriately manage your own margin rules or failed to manage your own internal risks? Look, I'm sorry for what happened. Um, I apologize, and I'm not going to say that Robin Hood did everything perfect and that we haven't made mistakes in the past, but what, what I commit to is making sure that we improve from this, we learn from it, and we don't make the same mistakes in the future. If we can prove, or it's proven, that he, that he made the decision based on pressure, from any of the firms or people we've mentioned, you should go to jail. Okay, Vlad, you know everybody here is watching this hates your guts, right? <laughs> That's what I hear. You guys are billed as a firm to retail traders, yeah. and, and you screwed them over. That decision basically had to crater the price and left a ton of your customers holding the bag. So I completely agree, but we also have to play play by the rules, right? But you it's could have play. played by the rules by freezing both. That's within the rules, no? I, I'm not sure. I mean, that um, we, we can look into that, but it wouldn't be standard, and it wouldn't have There was nothing problem. standard about this. That's true. people do think you should go to jail. What do you say to that? Well, I think it was based on this false premise that was harmful of me somehow colluding with hedge funds to do this, which was completely made up out of thin air, right? Like there's no evidence for it. And I think it was completely wrong. I guess the question is, if you are attempting to democratize trading here, yeah, and if an event like this can make it so that your customers don't have the same advantages in the market as a hedge fund, for example. Have you failed? Well, I'm not really sure what advantages hedge funds have. Well, I mean, on January 28th, your customers couldn't buy a stock that hedge funds could. Our customers couldn't open positions, but it's not like throughout this process, hedge funds didn't, uh, didn't feel any pain. I mean, you saw the Melvin Capital, they lost a lot of money through this process. So I think the story of hedge funds winning and retail customers losing um, is not quite the whole story here. It's actually 
in a way much broader than that because it's a systemic issue like most broker dealers many broker dealers have restrictions in place this not only affected robin but every company or most companies that were offering stocks put restrictions in place to some degree because nobody has infinite amounts of money what is your message to the wall street bets community today Robinhood is going to continue to be the place that serves you, serves our customers, and uh, make sure that as long as we're in business, we provide individual investors with all the tools they need to have uh, every advantage in the market that the institutions have. The idea of Robinhood is good. Uh, the execution of what they did was very poor. It was their job to make sure that they could protect those investors and get them all the way to the other side of the river. Instead, they started a process at Robinhood and they came forward with that and got those investors in a boat and in the middle of the river, they stopped. And those people were stranded. That morning when I saw you could not buy GameStop, BlackBerry, AMC, I immediately thought, this has got to be a class action lawsuit because uh, we feel like this uh, was market manipulation. I have a background in web development, and so I quickly hopped on, created a quick WordPress site, Robinhood class action 2021.com. So it was just a pretty basic, like, hey, it's our opinion that Robinhood's manipulating the market. And I had a quick little sign up sheet. This is like, hey, have you been impacted by this too? Like, let's band together. I'll try to work with a, a law firm who wants to pick this up and, and uh, you know, see where we can go from there. Just in like about 24 hours, we got over 8,000 people to sign their name. There was likely hundreds of millions of dollars lost that day for the average retail trader because of it. Someone needs to be held accountable for that. Sometimes you need to fight for good. Good doesn't mean rainbows and unicorns all the time. Good sometimes means you gotta go and stand up and fight. More than anything, I wanna send a message. We, as retail traders, are a community, and that the rules need to be even for everyone. The juicy story, especially if you believe the back room, like, conspiracy theories, which I do. I found the original framing of the story, David versus Goliath, small takes on big. It was so appealing. I have some advice for kids my age. You could open a CD, get the interest to grow, and you might be able to buy a couple of stocks if you ask your parents and they could buy the stocks for you. I am going to save 2,200 of it and I'm gonna invest the other thousand into companies like Roblox and Microsoft and some other different companies, but I'm not putting all the thousand into those companies. I'm still looking into it. became a story of us versus them, little guy versus hedge funds, longs versus shorts. Those become dangerous. Wall Street can be a very expensive place to act out a morality play. I'm so proud to be part of history now, and I'm very proud of what I accomplished and to have been a part of this phenomenon. The Wall Street Bets saga you know, was a movement. The people who didn't previously feel they had a voice, finding that they do have a voice and they can make an impact. And by raising their voices together, they can shine a light on areas of our society, and in this case, in our financial system, where a light you know, needs to be shined. This is people literally using their money to fight back, to make a statement like, hey, we're allowed to invest too. We're allowed to do what you do. We're allowed to, to make money for our families and pay for stuff we actually need. This story is still unfolding. And as far as heroes and villains out there, I don't think we know yet. I don't think the short sellers are the villains. I don't think that the people that sold GameStop at the top are the heroes necessarily. I think it's what makes a market. 
I help with the Thunder Giants people. He has put Wall Street on notice. And we found your room in a system that is designed for you to never be in the room. And we are, and now you have to deal with us. What this moment showed to me and the world is how the playing field is not level for the individual investor. And when they start to win uphill, nonetheless, the goalposts can be changed. The big investors, we're gonna learn that the small investor has power. And if you're a hedge fund shorting a stock, you better assign some level of probability that the little guy might band together and wipe out your short and wipe you out along with it. We're starting to realize the full value and potential of the collective online community like we've never seen before. It's powerful, it's powerful stuff that uh, I think will continue to shape the future forever. There's nothing more thrilling than uh, a Super Bowl about a stock. It's got winners and losers, protagonists and antagonists. It's a more fun company that might come alive. It's got a hedge fund that wants to wipe it out. And then it's got new democratic followers who can gang up and be like Wall Street. It's got everything. Is the game over? I don't think so.